what we've asked our staff to do is put your favorite assignments into ChatGPT, see what the responses are, and could you invite the kids to do something more than what ChatGPT provided? So in other words, let's not run away from it. Let's see what it can offer and then see how we take our kids further than that. You're listening to the smartsocial.com podcast. I'm your host, Josh Oaks. This is our district talk segment where we interview district leaders to learn how they're keeping students safe on social media so those students can someday shine online. Now, let's get back to the interview. Hi, I, my name is Dr. Daisy Morales. I am the proud superintendent of Live Oak Elementary School District located in Santa Cruz, California. We have three elementary schools and a comprehensive middle school, as well as an alternative program that serves students preschool to eighth grade, and we serve about 1,600 students. I'm John Malloy. I am the superintendent of the San Ramon Valley Unified School District in Danville, California, which is just outside of San Francisco. We have 30,000 kids in 35 schools. Hello, I'm Dr. Antoine Hawkins, and I serve as a superintendent of schools of the Evergreen School District located in San Jose, California. We have approximately 16 schools, which are comprised of 13 elementary schools and three middle schools. We have around 9,100 students. We are the largest elementary school district in San Jose. How is your school district approaching AI tools like ChatGPT? So we know they're, they're a tool, right? Um, I know the conversation has been that it's gonna replace teachers. I don't think that will ever happen. It's like when we gave them their one-to-one devices, it's teaching them how to use this new tool within the structure of education. It's not gonna replace them and it shouldn't replace students writing in the classroom, which is a big concern, especially with English teachers, is it's a new tool and how are we gonna use it in the integration of teaching and learning? So it is seen as just that, not the replacement of anything. So in San Ramon Valley Unified School District, we are leaning into artificial intelligence. We have started with a big community event where we brought in an expert to help us understand possibilities. We have created draft guidelines that our educators now are giving us feedback on. We're doing parent meetings to help understand where we are going. And we're listening closely to students who already have practice in using ChatGPT and other tools in order to see what's going on there. We're asking our staff to simply try its use and to reflect what it means for them and for their practice. And our goal is to have some responsible use policies and procedures by the start of the next school year, 24-25. Well, we in all honestly have not dug down deep into the chat GPT environment per se in terms of the tools that we're utilizing in our approach. I think we are at the point of assessing what that looks like, and we want to look at best practices from across the country and other school systems and what they're doing to ensure that they're approaching it in a way that is contemporary and that we're approaching it in a way that can utilize best uses and services for students within our community. Are there any positive use cases that you've heard of from students or teachers around AI tools like ChatGPT? So currently the ones that are like dipping their, their toe in the water are my principals. They're starting to model to teachers how they can use it to like lesson plan, especially starting with their emergency sub plans. Like when you're sick, you don't want to do them. It takes forever. How do you use that tool to script a lesson plan around what you need to do it for that particular day? So that has been kind of the, the, the toe in the water using it for emergency sub plans and mostly by my um, principals. What I love about the opportunity of ChatGPT and AI is we have been talking for decades that we want to invite our kids to engage in really deep learning tasks where they're thinking and creating and synthesizing and all kinds of good stuff. What we've asked our staff to do is put your favorite assignments into ChatGPT, see what the responses are, and could you invite the kids to do something more than what ChatGPT provided. So in other words, let's not run away from it. Let's see what it can offer and then see how we take our kids further than that. A second thought, I have been really spending personal time learning about how AI could provide effective feedback to students. 
Now, they're still perfecting that. However, if our teachers were freed up to actually have more data just in time to think about the instruction they're providing so that they're not spending all their time grading things, but actually receiving that feedback with the students and using that information, that excites me. So I think that we just have to take it one step at a time. We have to be aware of the fact that there are some concerns we need to pay attention to. I'm grateful that the federal government is engaged in process around regulations and such because we don't know everything we don't know. But I see this as a great opportunity to transform schools. Oh, yes, there are positive cases that I've heard. With ChatGPT, students have been able to engage in thought-provoking discussions and debates, stimulating their critical thinking abilities, also by encouraging open-ended conversations. This is important in terms of ChatGPT and its uses, but conversely, we don't want ChatGPT to be utilized in such a degree that students aren't thinking and engaging in the process in terms of where the chat GPT is doing the work for them. So conversely stated, we have had thought provoking discussions and debates stimulating their critical thinking and abilities around this. And we've encouraged open minded conversations in terms of chat GPT and the appropriate uses of it. Now, with regards to chat GPT and other AI tools, are you changing any of your techniques for grading students and the types of assignments being used in the classroom? Not really, because very few teachers, if at all, give an assignment where it's like, write me a five paragraph essay, right? Those writing process happen gradually over time in different sessions throughout the, the learning process. And so teachers have now realized that the time to give a set, you know, an essay as homework are long gone and are starting to use it as a tool with a project-based learning model where like use it to investigate this or how would you write this better? So no, our grading is standards-based. So it isn't necessarily based on one assignment or with any of that. It is very much based holistically on how students are showing performance or ability to meet a standard in various ways. But just using it for one assignment is not going to shift their grade. So our invitation to our educators is think about the assignments you're inviting the kids to engage in. If ChatGPT can answer all the questions, then we might want to rethink what we're asking. Let me say it another way. I believe content is important. Schooling focused on academic content forever. But right now, Artificial intelligence, and frankly, the internet, has put content in our fingertips easily. So the question becomes, what do we do with that content? How do we know if that content is accurate? How do we take different contents and actually make new understanding with it? That's what education, I believe, should be. And the presence of AI is simply allowing us to move quicker into what we're calling a deep learning space where we're not just having kids memorize facts, but we're actually asking them to go deeper. So really, let's let AI help us go deeper. No, we are not changing any of our grading techniques at the moment. That takes stakeholder input, which at that level would primarily be our teaching, credential teaching staff. However, when we get to that point, we'll definitely have those robust conversations about what that looks like in terms of student grading. Thanks for listening to our smartsocial.com podcast. I'm your host, Josh Oaks. This was our district talk segment where we interview school district leaders to learn how they're keeping students safe on social media so those students can someday launch into their future by shining online. This episode was brought to you by our smartsocial.com VIP program. It's called the Very Informed Parent Program, which helps you engage your students with teen-led video lessons. Stay one step ahead with our premium parent newsletter and discover hidden features on trending apps on teens' phones and our 54-plus live parent and student-friendly events every single year. You can click on the link below to chat with one of our team members if you want a free pass to our VIP program to support your community with our smartsocial.com resources. And if you're a district leader who has a success story, we would love to feature you on a future episode. You can click the links below to reach out. Thanks so much for listening, and we look forward to seeing you on the next episode. Have a great day.